Diasa Flow, Monsters, Inc. Midterm Project, February 19, 2017. Monsters, Inc. is a factory that generates electricity for the city of Montropolis by the screams from children. Monsters enter the human world through the closet door in children's bedrooms, which is dangerous work because humans are assumed toxic. Sully is the top scarer, while Randall is his fierce competitor. One night, Sully discovers that Randall's left the door open in an unethical decision. Um, as a result, Boo escapes, which is a little human girl. Boo is discovered by Sully, who brings her home to Mike. When Boo enters Metropolis, word soon breaks and chaos ensues. Since the children are becoming harder to scare, energy production is low. So CEO Henry Waternoose III is determined to find a solution. Randall reveals that he has built the Scream Extractor to harness the screams of children to get competitive edge on Sully. However, this also solves the company's production problems too. CEO Water News decides to back Randall because it solves the problem. Our target market are all ages. It's a PG movie so anybody can watch it. Our character profiles include James P. Sullivan, or Sully. He is a large blue monster with horns and purple spots. Sully is the best employee and expresses the best character traits in doing so. Sully is trustworthy, ethical, and intelligent despite his personal abilities. Sully thinks with a company mind first, company first mindset and enjoys including others in his success. He works well with others as he demonstrates the skill within his assistant, Mike. He does not boast about his position. Sully can actually be seen as reserved at times. He has great qualities of an up and coming manager. Mike Wazowski, a stout green monster with one large eye and skinny limbs. He is Sully's coach, station runner and best friend and roommate. Mike is more charismatic and organized, yet his eccentric and neurotic behavior often lead him off course while working. Despite his flaws, Mike's outgoing personality is received well by almost everyone. Although Sully's best friend, Mike often stands as a contender to Sully, attempting to sway and manipulate him to fit his personal goals and desires. Boo, a cute button-nosed brown pigtailed two-year-old who escapes from her door into the monster factory. Boo poses as a stereotype in the workplace that is seen as horrendous. She is human. This is a source of conflict in the plot. Based off previous rumors, Boo carries an unknown stigma to her. She carries herself, she herself is confident, outgoing, and very accepting. Mike and Sully try to protect Boo from the bias of others by making her address to monsters, but the guise is soon seen through. Our next characters are Randall Boggs, who's an eight-legged purple monster. He has a chameleon-like ability to change suit and blend in with his surroundings. His appearance is a symbol of his sneakiness and ability to adapt to any given situation. Randall is a competitor of Sully for top scare position, as he has a strong relationship with Waternoose and wants to meet expectations. Although his abilities are recognized by his peers, Randall fails at gaining others' trust with his underhanded ways and crude pranks. Randall is forced to action when pressure from top managers begin to fall on him. He's showing traits of high intelligence and understanding by innovating his own machine, the Scream Extractor. Randall knows his actions are wrong, but in his pursuit of getting big numbers, he's lost, he has lost sight of how a business should really be run. Henry J. Waternews III, the big guy in town, a bug-faced monster with a crab-like body and appendages. He's the CEO of Monsters, Inc. The position was passed down to him through three generations of family ownership. There is an insinuation amongst the employees that he's not equipped for the job. Water News takes a laissez-faire approach amongst his employees. Except in situations which require his presence. He is a mentor to Sully as he wants to protect his best scarer. Water News attempts to plead his best employees so that they will be more proactive in leadership roles. However, Waternoose is also concerned with keeping the company afloat. This concern causes him to engage in a secret agreement with Randall behind Sully's back, which doesn't want a good example as top management and be all inclusive with his employees. Episode one. Sorry. Episode one. Introduction of the of the characters at the workplace monstering. 
Scene opens up to the scare floor where the monsters prepare to work. Sully and Randall are being coached to work. The relationship between the monsters is shown. Children's screams produce energy while the monsters believe the children's are toxic. Water Noose walks in showing concern for energy production. Randall is in the lead for the day, but at last minute, Sully pulls through and beats Randall. Randall is furious with the result and insistent on getting even. Water News pulls Sully to the side and expresses how worries, worried he is that Monster's Inc. will fail. Board is directors breathing down his back and, the, and his business has been his family for three generations. Water News asks Sully to start training employees. Manage the situation. Management. It's a process of assembling and using sets of resources in a goal-directed manner to accomplish tasks in the organization. Water News is the manager, and the success of the factory relies on him. The resources are the monsters and the scare factory. The tasks they need to accomplish are generating energy to power the city. This episode shows the culture of monstering, because an accepted belief is that children are toxic. This is accepted throughout the group and affects the monsters' behaviors. Teamwork is also valued, as they all work together to power the city. Episode 2, Monster yeah. Ethics. Sully ventures on the scare floor after hours to receive Mike's paperwork, because Mike didn't complete it. He then discovers a vacant door on the scare floor. Sully's alarmed because this, this is a direct violation of company policy. He enters the room to investigate, then exits. Without noticing, Boo escapes onto the scare floor. Sully tries to put her back, but Boo keeps playing with him. Sully scrambles throughout the factory because he thought he lost Boo. He then realizes Boo is on his back and she's calling him Kitty. Here, Boo is foreseen as not so dangerous after all. So, finally, Sully gets Boo back in a bag and goes back to the scare floor. Randall is seen on the scare floor trying to access the door. He hides with Boo and then and decides to take her home. Manage the situation. Monsters Inc. Incentives incentivize hard work and competition by rewarding Sully. Due to jealousy, Randall is bound to make an irrational decision to serve self-interests. Randall makes a self-maximizing situation. S scaring after hours is against company policy. It is important to regard all of your employees in their efforts to make the workplace more often. Water News is not developing a good culture and it is hindering his employees' work ethics. As Sully discovers Boo, he tries to make a rational decision, but when he's at first unsuccessful, he realizes the myth of children being toxic. Human aspects of bounded rationality enters. Randall is faced with the ethical dilemma, follow the rules or beat Sully. Sully is faced with the ethical dilemma, follow the rules or protect Boo. Episode 3, Chaos and Monstropolis. Mike is out to dinner with Cecilia and Sully inter interrupts him with Boo. Boo escapes in the restaurant as all the ma monsters panic. On the street, the CDA looks for the loose humans. Mike, Mike, Sully, and Boo hide in the apartment while Sully and Mike hide from Boo. She's playing with the toy and then they take away from her because they don't want it to get it contaminated. She cries, causing a power outage. Mike then trip, rolls, and falls in the garbage can, which causes an intense power surge, causing the lights to break. This is where the power of laughter is foreseen as an alternative to screams. Sully then says this could ruin the company. Mike replies, well, what about us? and continues to come up with rational plans. They then brainstorm ideas. Man the situation. Sully reasons with Mike that um, children are not toxic at all. The right decision is to turn the kid in. This, this is seen as the right decision because monsters think that children are toxic, but they know children are not. They could both lose their job and face greater consequences if they don't play by the rules. Overall, Water News is creating unethical dilemmas for his employees by encouraging immoral behavior. Here we discuss the moral intensity factor and how each is demonstrated in the movie. In no part of the movie do we see employee handbooks or codes of conduct to enforce no scaring off the clock. Which ethical approach would be best for the, com for the company? Deception. With the whole town in panic over the child loose, Mike and Sully attempt to sneak Boo into a room to scout into Monsters Inc. disguised as a monster. After discovering Boo's escaped,
from his door on the scare floor, Randall stops Mike, telling him to get the door, that he will get the door. If Sully and Mike return Boo while everyone's at lunch, Mike gets Sully to bring Boo back to the scare floor during lunch. Sully proclaims that he doesn't trust Randall. Mike says that this is a limited time offer. Due to Sully being uncomfortable in the situation, Mike goes in to prove Sully it's safe. All of a sudden, Mike is snatched right off the bed. This shows that the return of Boo is actually a plot for Randall to kidnap Boo. Um, this is another example of when Mike attempts to sway Sully into doing what Mike thinks is right. This directly creates a problem for Sully because he is at odds whether he should do what feels is right or what other people are telling him to do. This also exemplifies poor planning as Mike and Sully fail to think outside the current situation. Th this mirrors Water News's poor behavior setting setting and his own failed approach. They could have easily implemented the SWOT analysis to aid in thorough planning. It is up to managers to have this foresight on decision making to ensure the consequence of their actions do not affect the business negatively. All right. Profits versus morality. Randall reveals his scream extractor, which sucks all the screams out of children, and a twisted attempt to solve the company's production problems. Despite the machine's potential of causing extreme in injury to children, Randall decides to use it anyway. Since Randall ended up with Mike instead of Boo, Randall straps Mike to the machine. Sully intervenes and unplugs the machine. After a chain of events, Sully reports Randall to Waternoose. Little does Sully know Waternoose has been conspiring with Randall in an attempt to satisfy Randall's greed and save the factory. Management situation. Managers will always have to balance efficiency and profits with ethics. There's a fine line between them, and this is depicted well in Monsters, Inc. The Scream Machine is basically a torture device for children that extracts all their screams, essentially using them as living batteries. While this is very efficient use of power and resources, it is absolutely morbid ethically. While most managers will not have to face something that morally wrong, they need to keep their consciousness in check when making efficiency versus ethical decisions. Life or Death while Mike and Sully are in the Himalayas, Randall has kidnapped Boo and strapped her to the Scream Extractor. Sully comes to the rescue by destroying the machine. Waternoose sends Randall after Sully. After Sully, Mike returns to Sully. Sully knocks out Randall and flees with Mike and Boo. As Randall chases them, they fly through a factory, riding doors within the giant vault where all the doors are stored. Boo's laughter activates the doors, allowing them to pass freely between worlds. Sully and Mike exile Randall into the human world. Sully and Mike find Boo's door, but Water Noose sends it back to the scare floor. Management situation. Mike and Sully destroying the machine shows that they value their morality over a device that is believed to be able to power the entire world. It's a tough decision and shouldn't be taken lightly. When it comes to making ethical decisions in the workplace, it comes down to examples set by senior executives like Water Noose. Arnu sets a bad example by aligning his interests with Randall due to his compromised position in Monsters, Inc. His code of conduct has shown to be corrupt when he goes as far as banishing two of his best employees. Even after the machine is destroyed, Randall gone, Mike and Sully finally find Boo's door to end the situation. Waternoo sends the door away. Instead of rewarding Sully and Mike for returning Boo back to the door to correct Randall's mistake, he punishes them. This episode really hammers home the idea of ethical decisions and behavior of top management. After their return to Monsters, Inc., Sully confronts Waternoose about the Scream Extractor. Waternoose reveals to him that he was working with Randall the whole time in an effort to kidnap children and extract their screams. Waternoose argues that it was for the good of the company and the energy crisis would be solved. Unbeknownst to Waternoose, they are in a practice room being recorded for the entirety of Monsters, Inc. to see. Waternoose is arrested and Sully becomes the new CEO of Monsters, Inc. Scaring children is outlawed, causing the company to shut down. shut down. On the last day of Monsters, Inc., Sully discovers a new way to power the world using children's laughs instead of screams. This new energy source is more ethical and powerful than the old one, ushering in a new era of prosperity. Boo's returned home. Her door is destroyed. Sully thinks it'll be the last time he sees her, but Mike surprises him in the end by rebuilding Boo's door and Sully having the final piece of her door that he kept his memento to reunite once again. Management situation. A good manager knows when to stand up for what is right and to think outside the box. Sully confronts Water News about his schemes and makes a stand for what is right. 
When Sully becomes the new CEO, he immediately takes charge and comes up with alternative options to solve the company's problems. A manager must evaluate all options available to them in order to arrive at the most ethically sound, efficient method. Our future plans for our group would include incorporating more storyboards and thought out mind maps, creation of scripts for each episode, and meeting in person as a whole group. 